But if you have or are thinking about a term life policy, you cannot skip this video. Give me a few minutes and maybe one day down the road, this seemingly trivial concept might mean the difference of hundreds of thousands of dollars to you because a lot of people who are looking for the best value, cheap term life insurance policy may not know that they are potentially making a big mistake when comparing policies. Assuming that a term life insurance policy is the right product for you, and in many cases that is absolutely the case, then you need to understand the following concept, renewable versus non-renewable term life insurance. Now, most term life insurance policies are renewable, and this feature could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars to you, and I'm gonna explain exactly why. And the reason I'm a bit fired up about this is because you may unknowingly have been sold a policy that isn't renewable because you didn't know to look for that, and it looks like some websites might be showing you policy comparisons that may not have made a proper apples to apples comparison, and I know I'm not the only one who thinks that maybe this is less than ideal. You may not have realized what the trade-off is that you were or are potentially making. Hey everyone, my name is Preet and this channel is for anyone who wants to learn more about personal finance, investing, and the world of money around us. And sometimes that world includes insurance, which again, I know is not sexy at all but it is very important. This is not a video to try and convince you that whole life or any other permanent insurance policy is better than term. I used to be licensed to sell insurance maybe 10 or 15 years ago, but I don't sell insurance now. And the purpose of this video is purely to help you make a more informed decision with the help from someone who knows a little bit about what they're talking about. And to prove that, I've included a link to a video which explains the difference between term life, whole life, and universal life, and more. And I know that that video is being used by people studying to pass their life insurance exams. So with that out of the way, let's explain what you need to know when trying to pick a term life policy. To make sure we're on the same page, let's start with a hypothetical situation. You are a 25 year old identifying as male, non-smoker, average health. You want to purchase half a million of life insurance coverage and you're looking at a term 10 policy. You get quoted a monthly premium of let's say 28 bucks. By the way, premium is just a fancy word for how much you pay. That's the cost. Because this is a 10 year term policy, the term is 10 years. This means the premium of $28 per month stays at $28 per month for the 10 years from age 25 to 34. As long as you make your payments as agreed, if you were to die during this 10 year period, then $500,000 gets paid out to your beneficiary. If you stop paying the premium and the policy lapses, the $500,000 doesn't get paid out if you die, right? Very simple. So let's now introduce a very important word you need to understand, renewable. The vast majority of term life policies are renewable term policies. That means that when you get to the end of your first 10 year term, you would automatically get renewed into a new 10 year term, in this case from age 35 to 44. But now the monthly premium might jump up and that jump up could be significant. Maybe the premium increases by $30 to $58 per month. One basic reason for this is that your odds of dying increase as you get older. And as the risk of dying increases, so does the risk of the insurance company having to pay out $500,000 in this case. But there's actually quite a bit more to it than just that, and we'll come back to that in a second. The next 10 year term from 45 to 54 might see the premium increase by $60 to $118 per month. And from 55 to 64, the premium might increase again by $180 to $298 per month. Now, at some point, the costs are too high to continue and your need for protection generally goes down as you build up assets over time. And this is why people sometimes view term life as renting protection for when you need it most as your need for insurance decreases as your assets increase over time. Now, this is very important. If you were to apply for a new 10 year term policy when you were 35 years old, so 10 years after the start of our hypothetical policy, and you qualified as healthy at that time, the premium might be something like $30 per month. So your first question might be, what? Why is it $58 per month for one 35 year old, but only $30 per month for another 35 year old for the same coverage amount and term? The key to all of this is the difference between your individual actual health and the average estimated health of people like you. 
But let me explain that so it's crystal clear. Imagine you have 1,000 25-year-olds. Over the next 10 years, we might have 50 of them die. Maybe another 150 of them get sick and their health is now compromised. And the remaining 800 are in good health at the end of 10 years. The insurance company doesn't know in advance which group you will end up in at the end of 10 years. Of course, if you die, you get paid out the death benefit, but what about everyone else? Will you still be healthy at the end of 10 years? Well, if so, your odds of dying are still low as a healthy 35 year old and you are a low risk. But if you become sick and then the odds of you dying early are greatly increased, the risk of the insurance company paying you out is also greatly increased. And this is why there is a difference between the premiums for the two 35 year olds. Someone who can prove that they are still healthy at 35 has shown that they are in the lower risk group. But for someone who proved that they were healthy at 25, 10 years ago, and doesn't reprove their health status at 35, the insurance company doesn't know which group you ended up in at 35. Since these 950 35 year olds includes healthy and unhealthy people, the average risk of the whole group is higher than the risk of the group of only healthy people. And so, if you are healthy when the next term comes around in your policy, and if you still want insurance, generally it's advised that you apply for a new policy, and then when it's in your hands, you cancel the old one. Just a side note, it also may be possible to opt to redo the medical check with your current policy and get your premium lowered. Now, doing either of these things will save you a ton of money if you keep proving you're in good health. Now, let's say you just let your policy renew at the end of the term and don't do anything. The default will be that your policy renews and you start paying that higher monthly premium. And as we've just seen, if you are healthy, this might be unnecessarily expensive. So you might be thinking, um, who wants to pay more than they have to? Why is a term policy being renewable a desirable feature? And here is the key because the insurance company will guarantee to honor these future premium amounts as long as you don't let your policy lapse, even if you become unhealthy in the future. And what may have seemed like an expensive premium when you are healthy might look like a bargain if you are very sick, which unfortunately can happen. So for example, let's say something really bad happens to your health right before the end of your term. If your policy is not renewable, your coverage ends at the end of that term and your ability to get a new policy is severely compromised. While you might be able to find a new policy, because your health is compromised, it will likely be very expensive. There may be a low limit to the amount that you can get, we're talking like $25,000 or $50,000, and it may have some exclusions, like if you die within two years of getting this new policy, you don't get the death benefit, but you only get a refund of the premiums paid. All of these situations are horrible. Perversely, you could end up feeling guilty for not dying faster so that your beneficiaries would be financially better off. But if your policy is renewable, then you can maintain your coverage amount, which could be substantial. Those guaranteed renewal premiums all of a sudden look like a screaming bargain given that the likelihood of you making a claim earlier than you thought is now quite high. So now the question you might be asking is, how much more does a renewable policy cost? Generally, the more features you have in a life insurance policy, the higher the cost. But because most term life policies are renewable term policies, and due to competition, you can find renewable term policies that are the same price or not much more than non-renewable policies. We're, like, we're talking like pennies a month in some cases. And I will show you some current quotes and comparisons to demonstrate that in one second. So why am I talking about this? Well, credit is due to Matthew Inglis, the founder of Creditor Insurance Watchdogs, who posted some strong opinions on LinkedIn about a company advertising term life insurance online and showing them to have the lowest rate when compared to a select few competitors. But what does not appear to be disclosed in those comparisons is that the policy they quoted does not appear to be renewable or convertible. Now, convertible means that you can convert it to a permanent insurance policy down the road. And while most people probably wouldn't take advantage of that, it does have use cases, but I'll talk about conversion in another video. 
Suffice it to say, when comparing policies, you have to do more than compare the premiums for the same death benefit amount, you also have to take into account the features of the policy. As we've seen, a renewable policy versus a non-renewable policy could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars in specific situations. But there's more. There are lots of insurance carriers out there, and I'll provide a link to a free tool for Americans and Canadians if you want to get perhaps a wider scan of quotes in the marketplace for insurance policies. You might find that you can get a policy with more features for about the same price as a policy with less features if you look at more than just a handful of companies. For example, let's look at the example Matt Inglis highlighted and try to recreate it. In the advertisement that he shared, the company PolicyMe appeared to have the best option for a non-smoking 35-year-old female looking for a quote for a 20-year term policy with a death benefit of $600,000. Their rate was $27.35 per month. So I went to their site to recreate that quote. $600,000 in coverage, 20-year term for a female non-smoker born on January 1st, 1987, making her 35. The rate, indeed, $27.35 per month. Using WinQuote, a publicly accessible insurance quoting website, we enter in the same variables. We are presented with 32 options, and all 32 options in this case are renewable term policies. Also, we see that there's only one policy that is not convertible, and that's from Primerica. And if we look at costs, we see that Desjardins is one penny more per month, and there are 11 policies within $2 per month more. Now, for disclosure, I've done work for about a third of the brands listed here, but not necessarily within their insurance divisions. Nonetheless, the real question you as a consumer need to decide is, if the renewability feature is a desirable feature, and if so, how much more would you want to pay to get it? My suggestion is that if the cost is basically the same, it's probably a no-brainer. If the cost is just a little bit more, as is often the case, I personally would only ever opt for renewable term. In fact, I have two term life policies and each are renewable. Again, just my personal opinion, but I would never get non-renewable term for myself unless it was somehow my only option available. Now, if cost is paramount right now, and because sometimes people just pick a round number for the coverage amount that they want, you should run an insurance needs analysis to try and quantify just how much coverage you do need. And if a slightly lower amount of coverage still covers your protection needs, then this might help not only make sure you get what you need, but at a lower out-of-pocket cost. So for example, $550,000 of renewable term 20 gives us 11 policies that cost less per month than the $600,000 option without renewability. If your head is spinning, you could consider talking to a licensed insurance broker to help you walk through your various options. Yes, some can be sales focused, we know this, so it's important to have a basic understanding of life insurance even when using an agent, and hopefully you can find a good one, and there are good ones out there. Another thing to keep in mind is that the policy premiums I showed, whether you buy them directly online or through a broker, cost the same. So the idea that cutting out the middle person leads to dramatically lower costs doesn't really appear to be a thing yet. Yet. Now listen, if you are serious about upping your knowledge about life insurance, make sure to watch that video I created that walks you from A to Z about all the major types of insurance. I think if you watch that, you will feel like a pro when it comes to talking about and understanding life insurance. If you like this video, I would appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel to learn more about money and managing your finances. And of course, hit the bell to turn on notifications for when I publish new content and I will see you in the next video.